Hello, this is Deborah Clay, author of The Borrowed Boy and Just Be, and presenter of Castaway Books. Each week, I invite one of my favourite authors to tell me about the books which have shaped their life and influenced their writing. This week, our guest is Elizabeth Holland. So today's guest is author Elizabeth Holland, and Elizabeth has written three books. The first is a novella, which is The Balance Between Life and Death, which was about um, the importance of putting your mental health first. And, and it said that you never know what is behind a person's smile, which is lovely, a really good reminder to us all. And on anxiety, you also have a blog, which is um, Anxiety and Liz, which is very supportive and uplifting and encouraging for people who are experiencing mental health problems. That's really good. And then you've written two novel, well, a novel and a novella, um, The Vintage Book Shop of Memories, which is great, uh, which is a romance. And then you followed it up with lots of hard work to get it out before Christmas with the um, Vintage Book Shop of Memories at Christmas, which I, I've enjoyed reading both of those books. They're excellent. So I'm delighted to have Elizabeth with us and on our Castaway Books. And I've asked Elizabeth to choose her five books. So say hello to Elizabeth. Thank you, Deborah. Hello. It's nice to talk to you properly and to have a little chat about which books I choose. Ah. So did you have difficulty choosing them? I did. I really did. Because um, I've realised that I think there's been periods of my life where I really haven't read much. Mm. And it's made me realise when those periods were and when I've really found my love for reading. Mm. Um, it's really fun to reflect on that. Yeah, it's amazing how much books do influence us. And yeah. just as you have um, music that is kind of a theme tuned to your life, I think so books mark out different periods of our life because whether it's be we choose them because of where we are in our life or they have an influence on where we are, but it's, it's a two-way process, which is a wonderful thing about writing books and reading books. So Definitely. fascinating. So let's start with your first book, Elizabeth. So my first book, I've got some of them here. I haven't got all of them anymore. I think where I've, when I moved out, I think I must have left some of them behind. Oh. So my first book is Harry Potter, which the first one came out in 1997 um, and I was only three then. So I was quite young for it, but I remember, um, I remember having it read to me as a little child. And I think that was really my first experience with books, or proper books anyway, um, and it just, I loved them, absolutely loved them. And as I got older, I remember picking them up for myself and reading them. And um, there's one particular time I remember when the Order of the Phoenix came out mm -hmm. and I was off on holiday to Florida with my grandparents, my brother and my uncle. And me and my uncle said, right, we're gonna have a competition to see who can finish it first and find out what's happened. Um, so I think it's one of the ones where one of the characters dies in it. Oh. So we wanted to read it first to be the first one to know what happened. And um, I think he probably won because I was only nine <laughs> years old um, and he's quite a bit older than me. Um, but I think it, um, it says a lot about the books because we were off to Florida, all the fun roller coasters and the rides. But the one thing that I remember from that holiday is this book. <laughs> ah, that's wonderful. So, so tell me, when you um, had Harry Potter read to you at three, was it Harry Potter that made you want to read for yourself? I think so, yeah. I mean, my... Um, both my nan, my mum and my uncle are all big readers. So I think they heavily influenced my love of reading um, and books were always very prominent in my life. But I think these ones were so magical and there was just something mm. about it and such a variety of characters that I think whoever you are, you could connect to one character in it. And I think for a young child, that was really quite important. Mm. As a child, in... who did you connect, who did you identify with as a child? had to be Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> and why? Because I've not read the books. I tried. I just couldn't get into them. So why? She's um, probably a bit of a know-it-all, <laughs> which as a child, I think most people would have described me as that. Um, I think just the down to even the frizzy hair and yeah. just she wasn't perfect. And I think in a lot of children's books, you get a lot of female characters that are perfect. Mm. 
And when you don't quite feel like as a child you fit into that box, it's quite nice to have characters that are a bit different and to feel yeah. like you can relate to them. Yes, it's a really important point, the way people do relate to characters in books and need to see things they can identify with. Yeah, books are very powerful. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> uh, so moving on, because the trouble is I found the first time I did this, I got so involved in talking about each, each book that <laughs> I almost ran out of time. So we'll move on to your book two. You were still young then. I was still now. really young. Um, I don't. I don't have this one. I must have left it at home when I moved out. So I'm going to have to go home at some point and try and find it. Yeah. Um, but around the age of ten or eleven, I read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which is quite a tough book for mm. my age. Um, but I'd watched the BBC adaptation of it, and I absolutely loved it. It was sort of my go-to whenever I was feeling a bit upset or a bit sad. You know, I'd pop it on in my bedroom and I'd watch it. So it was. It was kind of, I had to read it at that point. Mm. And I think it took me quite a long while and it was sort of a bit like I'd pick it up and I'd read a chapter at a time and then put it down for a while. But I, I loved it. And I think being so young and experiencing a classic, a romance and the history mm. and knowing that it could have happened, that was really important because having gone from something like Harry Potter, which is so magical and so otherworldly, to read something that could happen, because even you get you get like fairy tale romances, but they're not they're sort of unobtainable. Whereas mm. Pride and Prejudice just is attainable. So I think for me it was something quite special. And at that age, it really influenced me. And it was I like books because I like the escapism of them. And for Pride and Prejudice, you feel like you could you could just walk into that story. Mm. And I just I loved that. I loved everything about it and I still oh. do. But as you say, it was difficult reading for a child. You said, you said told me you were about 10 when you read that. That's yeah. a very challenging read for a 10 year old. Yeah, I mean, I've, as I said, I've, I've loved reading my entire life and I've always been encouraged. Um, my nan is a teacher, so oh. she's always very much encouraged me to read and to, to push myself with what I'm reading. And I think for me, if the story is good, I can read anything. And I think even back then that was the case. I think it was tough going. And that's why I think I'd, I'd pick it up and I'd do sort of a couple of pages and a chapter and then I might put it down and read another book. But it was something that once I start a book, I like to finish it. Mm. I'm terrible. I don't like to put it down even if I'm not enjoying a book. So I will keep going until I finish it. And did you read any other Jane Austen books at that time? Um, I don't think so. I think it was because it was such a... Um, a tough read I think once it was done it was sort of <laughs> like right I've read that now let's have a bit more fun with reading yeah oh, oh that's good and what were you doing in your life at that time about um, 10 what was life like did you enjoy uh, school no I didn't uh, I really didn't enjoy school um my childhood probably isn't some of my happiest memories um mm. I struggled a lot with my mental health and back then I didn't really know what it was I was just not very happy I really didn't enjoy school um and I think I had anxiety sort of bubbling away um and because of that I think that's why I took such pleasure in books because mm. I could feel all those feelings inside of books and I could escape and for me I think that's why books hold such a place in my heart mm. Mm. and writing as well I expect and writing, yeah, I am, um, from a young age, my mum dug out a little story that I'd written from, I don't even know how old I was, but I was quite young. So I've always been writing. I remember I wrote, um, we had to write an account at school and I chose to write about a servant, whereas all the other girls chose like the posh ladies. Um. And I remember absolutely loving it and being able to explore that servant's life and everything around it and being able to write it. And I remember I won an award for it at school. Mm -hmm. Uh, it shows your sensitivity which perhaps is one of the things that contributes to your anxiety I think that's with a lot of writers they have a lot of empathy and sensitivity you know, um, even yes and, and that being that open and drawing everything in it makes you a good writer but it comes with a downside as well yeah definitely yeah you, you feel everything which means you can write it really well but you do have to feel it yeah yeah well your writing definitely comes across as it's it, you know your, your writing's wonderful just as you were a mature reader your writing has belies it has a maturity that belies your age 
happy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to your next book, which is um, book three. Um, your turn. Right, I was a bit, um, I was a bit cheeky here because I put two books in with this one. Because for me, I think they went hand in hand with each other. So like many young teenagers, I read Twilight by Stephanie Meyer and I absolutely loved it. It was, I think at the time, the supernatural romance was quite new for my age group, at least in mainstream books it was. So it was something very new and I think I was swept up in the hype of it almost. And I loved it. I love this book. I brought all of them. I read them all. But as they went on, I was sort of thinking, oh, I'm not quite sure about the story anymore. You know, it's a bit not great. And when the films came out, that was sort of for me, I was like, you know what? This wasn't what I thought it was at the time. So then I carried on with my love of the supernatural romance, but I just wanted something with a better storyline and perhaps a little bit better written. Mm -hmm. um, so then I came across, I've got it here, I came across Morganville Vampires. Now, this is, I think this is one of the earlier covers um, and I stumbled across it in my local bookshop and I picked it up and I read the blurb and I thought, well, oh, that looks quite interesting. So I gave it a go and I fell in love with the series. Absolutely. It's, it's got the, the supernatural, the romance, but there's also quite a, more of a complex underlining story that goes throughout the series. And it was, it was, for me, it was a very different read. Um, I really, really did enjoy it. And I enjoyed it so much, I remember telling my friend, and I was like, you've got to go out and get this book. So she did that, and then she read it too. So we'd sort of finish a book, and then we'd be sort of texting each other, saying, oh, what, what did you think? You know, did you enjoy it? Um, and I think also that's the first book that I'd had that experience with, that a friend had enjoyed it as well, and we could talk about it. And it wasn't, mm. it wasn't just a little world in my head, then I could talk about it and live it as well. Mm. That was quite, that was really special. It is, it is important that I'm um, sharing books with people, isn't it? That's why I love book clubs. I love talking about the book I've just read and getting other people's views too. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Really fun. And the characters as well. You, you, when you talk to other people about certain characters, you'll start to see different sides to them that perhaps you hadn't quite picked up on, but someone mm -hmm. else had. Because mm -hmm. we really all identify with different aspects of characters. And we've got Definitely. different experience we draw on. So it's sort of multifaceted. You look at it yeah. in different ways. Yeah, that's the lovely thing about when you write as an author and you have different readers because they reflect back to you all the different dimensions, sometimes things you didn't see yourself. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I've found that. Yeah. But I, I'm fascinated by the whole vampire and fantasy thing, because I think I may be mistaken, but I think it's something that's really come out through a younger generation than me, because I notice on social media, there are so many people that are writing fantasy um, serials and they're very very popular but um, in my day they they never particularly were I mean we had J.R. Tolkien and I, I loved The Lord of the Rings I read that when I was 15 and Hobbit I think was um, reading at school and um, and I enjoyed those but the whole vampire thing and um, you know I, I have a feeling that came that came later and what do you think do you think it came later? I think it did I think um because you've got um Dracula mm. um something like that but I think it was the sense of I think Twilight romanticized it and I think from that it's it's almost merged itself with the romance genre and it's sort of become a hybrid hasn't it and I think for me I was quite shocked because I love romance that's my go-to genre but when I started writing and I became involved with the writing community I realized just how small romance audience is in comparison to supernatural mm. it really it makes romance audience look tiny. And I thought they were sort of one of the biggest out there, if I'm honest. But mm. seeing, as you said, on social media, so many people right now are writing the supernatural and the vampires. And I think it's a new, it's a new thing. And it's perhaps something that hasn't been as explored as much. Therefore, there's more potential, both for writers and readers. Mm. Do you think um, it also is because you can go into a different world, that it's an escapism? that is particularly popular? I think so, because there's no boundaries. You can do anything you want with that genre. Um, and that's something that sometimes I'll write a romance and you, you, you are confined to what you can do if you're sort of just writing within that genre. Mm. Whereas if you do something like a supernatural vampire, you can create your own world and do anything you want, really. 
as long as you're okay. consistent <laughs> yeah as long as you're consistent yeah <laughs> but yeah I think for a lot of people that's quite attractive mm -hmm. um and as you said it's it's a, another form of escapism it's sort of building on the escapism that you already get from a book and it's taking it to a whole new level Mm. I should have a go at reading one I, I'm completely put off by them because I've never been attracted to them but I shall have to find out from the people who are keen which one they'd recommend I don't I can, I can you recommend um, I can recommend one to you oh, no. I'll, um, I'll send you a message um, oh, you can tell what, everybody okay well I absolutely love oil and water um, oh right I'm sure you've probably seen it she's I an indie author um, and I, I love her writing I've had the um the pleasure of beta reading her second one in the series and it doesn't disappoint so if you oh. are looking in, I would really recommend her book then I shall read it and we shall have to give a, <laughs> shout, give a shout out to what was her name Lara Dominic I believe Lara Dominic okay there's a shout out for her <laughs> well done <laughs> I would try that <laughs> okay <laughs> So we go on then to, because you had two books there, but that's okay. We go on to a very different <laughs> one for book four. <laughs> so book four is a series that I love. It's the Shopaholic series mm -hmm. by Sophie Kinsella. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how old I was when I read these, but I think I was possibly a little bit too young to be reading them because I think they're sort of a late teen, sort of early adult kind of book. But my mum had read them. And she just knew how much I loved them. So she recommended them to me. And I think she even lent me hers. And again, it was something absolutely brand new that I was reading. It was a romance, but it was also so funny. Mm. You know, and I think I think you'd be hard pressed to read the, this series without having a few laughs. Um, and it's that's something that I really loved about it. You could pick it up. You could be in the worst mood ever. But by the time you put that book down, you would have a smile mm. on your face. And that's something that, to me, it was new because obviously having something with my mental health, to be able to pick up a book and something so accessible as a book and to put it down and find myself feeling happier, mm. it's really quite a new, that was a new feeling for me at the time. And I think it came at a time in my sort of mid-teens maybe where I was struggling with my mental health. And I think, I think a lot of people around that age do. Mm. And especially back then, there's not, that much support for people because it almost is just something that you sort of have to go through mm. so again that was another time in my life where I found reading really really helped me and I think it's also as you've seen I quite like writing sweet romances and escapism mm. and I think that's where my love for it really started mm. in the, that you really can escape and you can read something that's really happy and just romantic and you can put it down and you can think, oh, that was really nice. I feel happier for reading it. Mm. You are a romantic though, aren't you? I am, I am. In every aspect of life, I like to look at the romantic side of things. Yes, that, me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And so, yeah. Got that. So how old were you then? Oh, you told me about um, 14, early teens, you said, didn't you? Yeah, I think around there I must have been. Mm. Um, obviously, as because Sophie can, this series by Sophie Kinsella, I think she's still writing them. So it's a series that throughout my life I've sort of gone back to and picked up another. And I think during the first lockdown that we had, I was feeling a bit overwhelmed by it all. And I thought, you know what, I want to I want to start getting back into reading a lot. And I went back to the series yeah. because it was just that happiness that yeah. I felt was missing at that point in life. And it, it really helped. <laughs> yeah. Yes, a lot of books have got a lot of us through lockdown. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, okay, so on to book five. So book five, I haven't got any more. Um, I think I probably gave it away because it's not one that I'm going to read again. Mm -hmm. And it's Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. And... I picked it up. I remember, I still remember buying it. I went into Waterstones and I read the blurb and I thought it was just going to be another happy romance. So I thought, brilliant, I'll take that. And at the time I was at university and I commuted up to university on the train. And normally at rush hour, it's so busy, you can't really get much work done. So I'd, I'd read a book. So I thought, right, this will be perfect. I can read this book while I'm commuting. Well, I got a bit of a shock at how upsetting the ending is. And during rush hour on a train, I found myself crying <laughs> at the ending of the book. 
And I remember I got into university and I kept saying to everyone, you have to read this book because it was just, for me, it was almost life-changing and the emotions that it dealt with and the, the realization that, okay, this is fiction, but there are people out there that are going through this. And that was a real eye opener for me at the time. And I'd go as far as to say, I think it was sort of almost my first sort of grown up book that dealt with quite heavy emotions and quite heavy, just material, really. It really dealt with a lot of hard things mm. and quite difficult things to talk about. And it, it made it normal because it was in fiction and it mm. was in a book. And that was inspiring because such a difficult thing could actually be enjoyed at mm. the same time. Mm. It was, it was a really new concept to me. And even to this day, if I'm having a bad day, I'll think back to that book and I'll think, well, you know what? Things could be worse. Mm. And it's really, it's another one of those things that stayed with me mm. and changed my view on life really. Yeah, it, it, it always just amazes me that, as I say, the power of books. I think that's, um, I always write about protagonists who live on the edge of society because my career's all been in health and social care. And at men's, I've always had to, I've always listened to people who have coped with terrible adversity and have triumphed. And I've had to write horrible safeguarding adult reviews for, where families have talked about relatives who's died as a result of abuse and domestic homicide reviews. So when I write, I try to give them a happy ending and to give them a voice. And I think that when people aren't exposed to how other people live, reading a story which isn't throwing, giving, isn't forcing um, a message at you, but is just putting yourself in someone else's shoes, it's a really good way of developing empathy, isn't it? Yeah, and I think because I I read the book and then the film came out and I watched that. And I was all prepared to, you know, have been floods of tears, go through boxes of tissues. But I was surprised to find myself not as upset because when you're in a book, you are in that situation. You you are in it with the characters because the, you feel those emotions. Whereas for me, I don't quite feel that connection with a film. Mm. And that's something that books really can do. They really can bring emotions home. And mm -hmm. as you say, they can they can show you other people's perspectives of life. Mm. And it taps on, it taps on memories, emotional memory, doesn't it? You may not have experienced exactly the same thing, but you know, your love for somebody, for loss, those things that you have experienced, it touches that. And yeah. I think we, we, we like to be touched, we like to be reminded of those emotions, don't we? I think it's all about yeah. getting a better understanding of ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the kind of person that I like to learn, I like to ask questions. So books for me give that to me they, they give me another person's perspective on life and I can learn about how other people see mm. the world mm. and it's just for me books have so many different angles in them and you can take so much from them excellent well I know you love books and I know you love <laughs> reading and you love writing <laughs> so as we're coming towards the end of um of our chat I'm going to ask you um, to name one luxury you'd like to take with you. Um, and you will have a notebook. You can have all the writing material you want to write and you'll have these five books. Is there anything else you'd like to take? There was. I um, I know my first request was refused because I did ask for a solar powered Kindle, but that was a bit cheeky. Well, the, so... reason, I, the reason I refused <laughs> it was because if you could read as much as you liked and you could write as much as you liked, you'd never want to come off your island. Oh, I and I don't think that would be very healthy. I think <laughs> you'd need to come off and be rescued at some point and you'd say, no, go away. So <laughs> definitely. So no, so I Put some thought into it and I'm quite a logical person so I was thinking right what can I actually use on a desert island so I'm I've gone back to books obviously but I'm gonna ask for a book on foraging because I thought if I'm stuck on a desert island I'm vegetarian so I'm gonna struggle to eat so I thought it, it's two two birds with one stone really because I can read it and I can it can help me cook my dinners <laughs> You wouldn't even eat fish. No, <laughs> no fish, no meat. So I'm going to need that book to help me know what I can eat. Yeah, and you're going to need to be rescued quite sharpish because you're fading. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Thank you, Elizabeth. I really enjoyed talking to you, hearing Thank about you. your books and your life. <laughs> Thank you. It was great to chat. And it, it was great to get to reflect on my how my reading has changed and influenced my life. Yeah. And it will continue to with more reading. It will. <laughs> it will. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening to this week's episode of Castaway Books. References for all of the books discussed in this show can be found on my website, which is www.abrakdeborah.wordpress.com. It's the letter K and then my name, Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H. So until next week, goodbye.